Hello everybody and welcome to Cubone. My name is Quinton and my microphone is working. How wonderful. Today is another Hell Divers Tuesday and I forgot to check if there were any patch notes. Ah, oh, there is a new one. Uh, 304 posted today, 11 hours ago. So, I will go over those. But first, starting as always, last Tuesday showed us working through the Major Order to liberate Heat, Angels Venture, Veld, and Akamar 4. By the end of the day, we'd gotten through the first. Wednesday began with a surprise attack on both the recently defended Lasoth and the recently liberated Fenrir 3. Unlike Lasoth's last holdout, divers were preoccupied with the Major Order and unable to reinforce either planet, leaving us to grit our teeth and push on as liberty was stolen from both planets. As we struggled to contain the super colony outbreak, it became impossible not to notice the bugs slowly taking more and more of our well-won territory, making for a daunting task to reclaim it once we'd completed the major order. Thursday morning's biggest note was the release of a new war bond, the Polar Patriots. I have a full video breaking it down. The SMG-72 Pummeler. There are not a lot of one-handed options in the game, and most of what you have are pistols, lacking the stopping power required to survive. The Pummeler, mixed with the Ballistic Shield, you become a defensive bastion. And there will be a card available here. Aside from that, things kept chugging along with just under 24 hours to go. Veld was at 42% at an uprate of almost 5% per hour. And though Akamar 4 was stagnant, once Veld was clear, the planets would flood with divers. The major order seemed within reach, but time was running out. By noon, time had run out on the defense missions, with no time to worry over it as Fact Bay was attacked. Helldivers stayed steady, clearing Veld with well over nine hours to go. However, However, that was where the problems arose. Whether divers lost faith with so little time left or simply didn't like the conditions of Akamar 4, only 35% of available divers were fighting for the AMO. The defense on Fact Bay only had about 8%. Two other important planets, Fenrir 3 and Lasath, had 6% and 3% and the remaining 46% were spread around the galaxy, halting our liberation of the galaxy. That's a weird way to write that. It looked as though it would take a miracle to save the AMO at this rate. Despite the overnight push leading to the liberation of Veld, within 10 minutes to go on Friday morning and over 7 hours to go on Akamar 4's liberation, Helldivers realized the spread was not going to be contained there. Meanwhile, on Fact Bay, despite 4 hours being left, there weren't enough divers to hold the line there either. Through Friday, a new major order began, a daunting new task to eradicate 2 billion bots, reminiscent of the MO several weeks ago to kill 2 billion bugs. The big difference is that with a recent patch, the kill count are updating properly, meaning by the end of Friday, we were sitting around 200 million bots killed, 10% of the MO with four days to go. Alongside the MO, before the defense of Fact Bay was even over, a new attack was launched on Fernan Wells. Spurred by the new major order, Helldivers had it around 70% finished by Friday's end. On Saturday, overnight, this motivation continued. Vernon Wells was defended very early in the morning. Slightly later in the morning, divers took back Fenrir 3, fighting valiantly for the bug front while trusting others to handle the major order on the bot front. That major order was moving along as well, doubling overnight to over 400 million by noon of Saturday. Around that time, a new defense began on Angel's Venture, though it was only a small force of bugs sent to steal it, and so it didn't take very many divers to keep pace. It didn't look as though the bugs would be taking any more of our territory for the time being. The same could be said for the bot front, as divers added more scrap to the Major Order's pile, taking Lasoth back bit by bit, reaching over 70% by Sunday morning. Unfortunately, it wasn't all good news, as Wasat had also fallen under attack on the galactic western side of the bot front, and being so far from the war's top front, left it unprepared for attack, adding it to the list of worlds we'd have to save once we had cleared the Eastern Front. For the Major Order, our rate so far estimated we'd break our first billion bots by Monday night, leaving us with two days to get another billion. However, we were able to complete it a little order, uh, a little, <laughs> pardon me, we were able to progress it a little earlier by getting to over a billion by Sunday night through to the early hours of Monday morning. It was doable, though only just. By 9.30 Sunday morning, the attack on Angel's Venture had seized. 
Unfortunately, by noon, Wasat had been lost, though by the end of Sunday, we had retaken Lasat. The Midnight Divers split almost 20% to each men Kent and Pandion 24, eager to contain both fronts while we waited for another attack to fend off, holding Pandion 24 in a stalemate and making slow progress on men Kent through the night. By morning, another defense had begun, with the bots once again trying to take Vernon Wells, but with their forces spread so thin, less than 50,000 divers were needed to hold the line against their pathetic onslaught. In more dire news, overall reinforcement numbers hit an all-time low, dropping below 100,000 players for the first time since launch. Farrowhead doesn't do something to engage the player base soon, this could spell disaster for the community. By 8pm Mountain Daylight Time, we had defended Vernon Wells and moved the major order to nearly 1.25 billion by midnight, with just over 30 hours to go until the end, meaning we would need nearly 26 million bots per hour to complete it in time. Over the course of the next 11 hours, as of stream time, we had completed another 100 million of the major order, only roughly only roughly 9 million per hour of the 26 we needed, meaning the status of the MO looked dire. Around 6am, a new defense mission on Lasoth began again, and once again, the spread out forces of the automatons were no match for the Helldivers protecting the planet, which leads us to now, where we are sitting quite comfortably. On the bug front, we are looking at Hellmire, Pandion 24, and Fact Bay as our available drop locations, all three of which are sitting at 0% with an uprate of 0%. As for the bot front, a lot more options are available with Wasat, Chopesa 4, and Charbel 7 on the western front with Marfark, Menkent, Lasath, Short Bay, and Penta, all available on the Eastern Front. The majority of divers are focused on the defense on Lasath, with 44,000 divers ready there. At an uprate of 5.55%, which is a, over a percent and a half higher than we needed to be to take the planet. So we are making good progress there. Not very many divers elsewhere on the bot front, as the majority, of course, are focused on the defense. Overall, we do only have 67.8% of the major order complete, and with only 19 hours to go, it does not look like we're gonna make it, but don't let that discourage you. Get on the game, and we can actually make some progress there. Last minute recording for Wednesday, I asked for our head to do something big, and by liberty, they delivered. Unfortunately, this morning, we failed to secure the anti-tank mines through the previous major order, despite our best efforts. However, in rapid succession Wednesday morning, a new major order was announced, and we had a new defense mission begin, as Super Earth officially declared war. Massive Seaf training facilities are being erected on key planets to support training of eager conscripts. Hold the planets, Eris Pass, Vernon Wells, Heath, and Angel's Venture until construction is complete. Designated planets must be under Super Earth control when an order expires in 2 days and 13 hours. The dispatch states that war has been declared, mobilization across all sectors of the industry and economy has begun. Billions of able-bodied citizens from across the Federation have already volunteered for conscription. To train these new recruits, massive new facilities are being erected on a small number of lightly populated planets. The Helldivers must hold the planet's construction until it is completed. By the end of the night, we were holding Vernon Wells with only a slight lead and gradually taking Angel's Venture. We just had to hold them for two days to complete the order. I do think this is an interesting major order to give right after we did just have the biggest drop in players we've seen yet. This is a really cool major order though and I really hope that we'll see it actually come to fruition. Genuinely. We'll see. That said, we do have some new patch notes to go over. I have not looked over these yet, so I have, th this is a completely blind reading. For this patch we have made improvements and changes to the following areas. Crash fixes and miscellaneous fixes. For the crashes, fixed a crash triggered when the host left after a player hot joined, fixed an occasional crash in the loadout menu, and fix for a rare crash when transitioning to or from the ship. It seems like they have most of the crashes sorted out and a lot of them are a lot smaller now and not as big of a worry to uh, address. So miscellaneous fixes, fixed players getting stuck on the mission summary screen when the host leaves, fixed the issue of non-purchased super credits not being visible in the war bond overview screen, only relevant for Japanese release, that's odd. Optional account linking, now available in the account section of the in-game settings, as long as it's optional. 
Fixed Steam app ID supplied invalid or not allowed being shown due to a different error. Fixed attachments on weapons showing up as purple question marks in the tutorial in some cases. Airburst proximity explosion is now triggered only by enemies and hell divers. This is actually a pretty big one. Uh, I didn't know this was a thing. The airburst previously would activate when near walls and similar things. This simultaneously means that you're going to have a lot less false activations that kill less enemies. However, it also means that you're not going to be able to use it as easily to take out bug holes. This is an interesting one. The AR-61 tenderizer now has the correct color scheme. Did you give it the correct damage numbers? Because it was not there the last time I checked. Known issues. These are the issues that were either introduced by this patch and are being worked on or are from a previous version and have not yet been fixed. Players may not have the option to send, accept, or decline friend requests, may not have the option to block other players. Blocked players are not added to the blocked player list or prevented from joining games, so the block feature just does not work currently. Game may crash if the player changes the text language while on a mission. I kind of want to try that. I just want to see if it'll, if it'll do it. Players may experience delays in medals and super credit payouts. Yeah. That one's still kind of an issue. Although, admittedly, it is worse for Garrett and I because both of us, like, or rather, neither of us play this game daily. So it, it takes a little longer for us to log into the game and see the, uh... I don't know. Every time I log in after a major order, I get my medals. Yeah, because it's normally been like a week since the major order completed. <laughs> Players may occasionally receive excess XP. Yeah, don't fix that one. I'm fine with that. Enemies that bleed out do not progress personal orders and eradicate missions. Well, that's an issue. Arc weapons sometimes have uh, behave inconsistently and sometimes misfire. I wonder if that's what I was having trouble with because I wasn't getting mm. consistent kills and I didn't realize that might be an issue, like a, a, a bug in the game. I thought I was just using it wrong. I haven't noticed anything with that. I don't know. Well, we'll see. You, you sure did the other, yeah. other game. Yeah, that was, if you guys watched the last stream, it was a massive issue for me, and I kind of just stopped using oh, the I, weapon. Oh, I meant like, you, you didn't see any issues when I was using the weapon. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So shot you with That it. is true, you did do that. Most weapons shoot below the crosshair when aiming down the sights. Isn't that just bullet drop off? <laughs> I just assumed that's what that was. Yeah. Uh, AR-61 Tenderizer deals too little damage and is not in the final state we're intending. Okay, cool. That's good. Because the AR Liberator Concussive does that. I don't have that unlocked, though. But the Liberator has 60 damage, 45 capacity, 15 recoil, and a 640 fire rate. The Tenderizer has 60 damage, 35 capacity, 10 recoil, and 600 fire rate. It's it's worse in almost every way. And it, it does not have Concussive rounds uh the smg does i don't know if that's what you were thinking of. although weirdly it's not listed the uh, the pummeler is not listed to have concussive rounds either but as far as i'm aware the tenderizer doesn't but it has definitely lower damage than it's intended and i brought this up in my patch notes video it's been kind of a like it, it kind of led to the weapon not impressing anybody it it's hopefully the damage increases by i don't know uh, 15 I feel like would be good to to make it stand out a little bit the spears targeting is inconsistent making it hard to lock on to larger enemies dude I'm gonna be real I still have never used the spear <laughs> I don't know I don't know if it's in any way good the stratagem beam might attach itself to an enemy but it will deploy to its original location this has been a known issue for a little while hopefully they can get that one fixed because it can lead to a little bit of disappointment. Helldiver may be unable to stand up from crouching when surrounded by enemies. Fucking yeah. <laughs> Especially, I, I complain about them every single stream and will continue to. Fucking hunters. <laughs> they will just pile in on you and you cannot get up. Uh, and it, it sucks a little bit. Hand carts ship module does not reduce shield generator packs cooldown. Some players might become stuck in the loadout when joining a game in progress. I had that happen exactly once. Reinforcement may not be available for some players who join a game in progress. I wonder if you joining into my games and only having one reinforcement is a bug and not how that's intended to work. Like, it, I wonder if it's supposed to be that when you join, it should add like five reinforcements. Cause that's what I would think. That would I I make sense. Really ever needed the one. Yeah. Planet Liberation reaches 100% at the end of every defend mission. 
This has been on the known issues for a while. I think it's spreading because I've noticed it on a lot of other missions at this rate. <laughs> Not a lot to go over with those patch notes. They're just general bug fixes and uh, reiterating some known issues, but still worth going over. That will conclude our weekly recap. I hope you all enjoyed that. We'll be moving on to the gameplay section of the stream in just a moment. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to be gay and do crimes. We'll see you next time. For those of you on the stream, I'll see you in just a moment.